What's up, y'all? Ah, it's been a minute since I've done a wrap up, but okay, let's get into it. Hello, 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 Booktubing World. It is I, Capri Nicole, and I'm back with another video. So, first of all, let's get this out of the way. If you see my thumbs missing, no, you don't. <laughs> this these nails the, these nails they're coming off tomorrow so fear not i will be getting my nails done i'm still in my diy era like i'm not going back to the nail salon no time soon i miss my girl but I'm trying to stack my bread you know what i'm saying but for my birthday these nails are getting done also the hair we're in the process of a glow up hair reveal i guess y'all gonna see what my hair look like before the glow up comes up but the hair is dead you see me okay so today we're gonna be doing a april wrap up now april was one for the books like she was one for the books i was having so i don't even you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna look on goodreads and see the last time i had a five star because i had three five star books in april three and before that i don't even know the last time i had a five star it, it was further than just this year like i knew this whole year i hadn't had any five stars so it was all the way into april i had no five stars then the first book that i read was a five star book so let's see the last five star book that i had y'all it's been like because last year was not a good reading year like it wasn't a good year in general and it wasn't a good year reading the okay delicious monsters so before Feybound, before Feybound, the last book that i read that was five stars was in june of last year it was 10 months since i've had a five star when i finally found Feybound. 10 months like 10 months like I've had a few books that came close, but I didn't have any that were five stars to me. So when April rolled around and I had three five stars, consider my flabbergasted, okay? Because it had been 10 months. I hadn't had a five star read in 10 months and then I have three in one month. So I feel like it's only right. I, I don't usually do wrap ups, but I wanted to wrap up the reading month, talk about some of the books I read. In April, I read nine books, which to some people that may not sound a lot like a lot, but I work full time and I have other shit to do. So if it was up to me, I would be reading all day. But my attention span and the things I have to do on my day to day basis, that's simply not the case. So I read nine books. I finished, technically I read, hmm. Technically I read 10 books, but one of the books is for a different video and I don't really wanna talk about it here. I will mention it, but I won't go into depths about it. So I'll talk about the nine books that I read, the ratings and stuff like that. And then I'll talk about the three books that I'm either close to finishing or I just wanna mention in this video because a majority of the book that I read was during the month of April. So you know how sometimes you finish almost a whole book in one month and then you finish it like 20 pages later the following month, but then you count it as that month's read. You know what I'm saying? Like that, kind of similar like that. Let's kick this video off. <laughs> so the first book that I read in the month of April was Faye Bound and y'all, oh my God. Faye Bound was one for the book. So Faye Bound, I listened to on audiobook. It was my April month pick for my book club and I read that book in two days. It was phenomenal. Like it really was phenomenal. Show stopping, cannot be compared to anything else. Like it was basically following these two sisters who live in this world where there are elves there are fey and there are human as a part of their history and they're kind of all divided and there's like the background of gods and the main character she gets put in a situation where she is no longer in her homeland and she is now surrounded by fey and during that time and during her journey we get to see the world of the fey they hate her they hate elf people like they really don't like each other they don't like each other at all but just the descriptions of the world and the 
characteristics of the character characters and the plot twist and the journey and the familiars and just like the dialogue and the connection between like the sisters because i if y'all don't know i love books that have siblings in it especially sisters so i like seeing like the younger sister and the older sister together i will say they did feel younger than they were mentioned to have been i think the main character yearn she's supposed to be like 32 and then her little sister was like 28 or something like that they definitely felt like teenagers like 100 percent. i will say that but i like their dynamic i like how her sister was like ride or die for her i love how she would not back down like anytime her sister was in trouble she came and found her i love that whole dynamic and i just love the setup of the whole world like it was just so unique to me i really enjoyed that the familiar in the book had a voice her name was pila and i loved her like she was so precious like she was my favorite part of the book and she was dropping them gems like she was like the yoda of the book she was getting those characters together because they was is doing the stupidest but I just loved it I really loved it it had all my hit words it had everything I needed and the characters were black so you know it, it just really ate like it really ate it was so unexpected because it wasn't a book that I was anticipating would be five stars I knew little to nothing about the book I just knew there were black fae that's it I didn't read the synopsis I didn't watch reviews I didn't really listen to anything I just went into it like damn near completely blind but I trusted the author because I read another book by them and I just trusted it and I <laughs> I'm so happy I had a banger at the start of the month because it had been 10 very long months like I, I had so many full stars and three stars and two stars and one stars and DNFs I was so tired like we were going on almost a year since I had a five star book so to get this one and I flew through it in two days like <sighs> I just it was one for the books it really was one for the books it reminded me a lot of Avatar the movie with the blue people it reminded me of that world because a lot of it was connected to nature and I'm a huge like I'm not, I'm not gonna say I'm a huge nature girl but I love nature in books especially tied to magic and just like the whole setup of the history and the mythology and the story behind the gods and the fae and the elves and the human like everything it just i i loved it and i have a special edition come in one of the islanders actually reached out to me and told me that they had a copy that from firm fairy loot and asked me if i wanted it and the answer is always yes like if y'all ever want to send me books or if y'all ever have something that you want to send me that's not on my wish list please reach out to me on instagram i i love having books from y'all on my shelves and this is like a special edition i don't even have an edition of this book yet because my boyfriend ordered me the pink one so that one's in route but I'm just so happy to get this on my shelves and I'm so happy this was the first book that I read it was a good time like I loved it so <laughs> that was the first book I read obviously it was five stars let's move on to the next book okay so the next book that I read was the spear cuts through water and this one this one was I was anticipating this because I heard another booktuber talk about it and it just sounded really unique to me i love the cover so i requested it on libby and it said like i had like a five week wait i don't know what the hell happened but within like two or three weeks it got released and i was so excited so i was able to read it i listened to it on audiobook and i believe i'm not 100 sure but i believe it's following chinese mythology i'm not 100 percent sure but it was very complex like it was very complex i read a few books that were like similar in a way but it kind of was like i don't even know how to explain it. it's really hard to explain but it's basically following like a mythology it's like a mythology story but it also is tied into a family so we're basically following the main character whose grandmother tells him stories all the time like growing up and the stories are very vivid he really loves hearing them and as time goes on she starts telling him like you know this is true this is our history blah 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 stuff like that and it ties into the mythology of this world where the world is ruled by the emperor and his, his three sons and it's so complicated like i don't even know how to explain it like you're not even just getting a point of view from the main character he disappears at some point but it goes back and forth where you get a little a little piece of, of a quote from damn near every character in the book including like the rocks and the animals like i'm telling you like no matter what's happening it'll pan off to like some 
uh, it'll pan off to someone that was just a viewer or a bystander and they're not even like a full-fledged character in the story but we get to hear their point of view or how they're tied into the story so it's like everybody eats like in this book everybody eats everybody's a part of the story it's very complicated it's very much like I want to say it's like magical realism mixed with mythology and very complex like it's a very long structured book I, like it's just it just feels like it feels like a political story but tied into mythology and magical realism and the, one of the main characters once we pan off one of the main characters is this warrior who is this warrior who is disabled i think he's missing an arm or something like that and he is like the hero of the story and it's kind of also like a love story because there's two boys that are traveling together in the story and it just goes from there like it just is so complicated and one of the characters one of the emperor's sons he was so unhinged but he low-key gave me loki vibes like if, if loki was even more deranged and insane he gave me those vibes like he was insane the emperor's sons all were so different they were also complicated and just i love seeing books that talk about power and how it corrupts you and these the emperor's sons their mother is the moon reincarnated into like a human form so their mom is a god okay essentially and they're just running after power this entire book and then we also have the main character and both of the main characters who are going on a journey and it's just it's just so complicated it's hard to explain but it's basically following like the emperor his three sons the two main characters on a journey and it's all tied together but one of my favorite parts about this book was the fact that essentially well i don't want to spoil it but essentially like the moon she's saved in a way by by the emperor and she asks him what he wants and he says like oh i want three sons and she says well why does it have to be sons like why can't it be daughters like does it really matter and he just says like oh because of tradition oh because of power oh because of this oh because of that and she just said she said something in the book where it was just like you're asking me for three sons for because of power and because of like because of political gain and whatever all this craziness but i'm literally a woman and i'm a god so it's like you know what i'm saying there's nothing more powerful than me so it's like how are you trying to pitch to me that bringing a man into this world will be more powerful than like just it doesn't matter or just bringing in a woman because i'm literally a god and you're asking me like you know what i'm saying so i don't know it just had a lot of really good quotes it did feel a little bit drawn out like i really wasn't it was some huge some parts of it that i really was enjoying because like the the animals were like a huge part of it it just was very complex it was complex it was long but i had a good time listening to it i was like it got to the point where i kind of was like damn this should have been split into like two books like because this is long as hell like and it was just so many things that we were covering another book that i read this month that was similar not similar but reminded me of this book it had like a similar story storytelling but it just was so many point of view so many things going on so much stuff happening so so power driven but it was good i did enjoy it i do kind of want a physical copy because it's so pretty and i had a good time reading it and there was some great quotes so yeah there's that that was the second book that i read wait what happened that's the second book that i read i gave like a 3.75 it was really close to a four star but i really enjoyed it the next book that i read was legends and lattes y'all already know if you don't i will link this video up here i read this during the sleepover vlog where i like have a slumber party and just hang out and just read books that i slept on or books that i just never picked up that were super popular so for the last video we read legends and lattes and i gave it four stars it was cozy it was cute it was sweet everything everyone said about it was all true <laughs> i read book one and two so those were the next two books that i read legend lattes and bookshops and bone dust it had like a similar structure but in legend and lattes we're following viv once she retires she opens this coffee shop and there's this little baker who's a mouse and like just everyone slowly comes there and is drawn to this place they don't know anything about coffee they don't know what coffee is but she brings a coffee shop to a world that doesn't know about coffee doesn't know about like treats and stuff like that so it's just cute it's very found found family-esque got a little sapphic romance going on you know what i'm saying and 
it just was fun honestly it was cute for the longest time i thought this was a graphic novel but it in fact is not the second one is following viv as again i think it was like 20 years prior she's like a, like a young 20 year old and she this is at the start of her adventuring so it's kind of interesting to see her retire first and then we go back and see her as like a 20 something year old where she's just like full of adrenaline and she just wants to go on adventures and beat people up and whatever. But she's kind of forced to sit still because she gets injured on one of her first quests and she's kind of stagnant. But she helps this little mouse that owns a family a family bookstore and just goes from there. It's very cozy. It has like a similar structure to Legend Lattes, but it's just like a, a young Viv. And it just, it was fun. I enjoyed both of them. I gave legend and lattes four stars and i gave bookshops and bone dust 3.75 stars so those were the next two the next book that i read was beast of ruin which is the second book and beast of prey was my second five star of this month and i don't know how i slept on this series for so long i really was dragging my feet with this y'all i don't i don't know why because i loved all of the books this one did i give this one four stars yeah this one i gave four stars it's basically the follow-up to the second book it's kind of hard to explain it but it's a follow-up to the second book in this world where magic is kind of seen as something that's forbidden and the people that have magical abilities are seen as dangerous and magic is called splendor in this world and there's a lot of history with the gods this is a book that is heavy and the background and history with gods the gods show up the gods have a voice the gods have a huge part in this book and just it's heavy in mythology the characters are so well fleshed out you really end up loving all the characters the creatures and stuff in these books are top tier like the setting of the world the setting of the world is kind of spooky like whenever you're in like the jungle or the forest or whatever the scene is set so well the different creatures that are brought up in this book that are kind of sinister and cannot be trusted they are so well done and so unique to me that it just makes it so fun like there isn't a second in this book where something isn't happening there's also really great dialogue there's really like close-knit friends and just seeing the world develop and just seeing these characters grow together and learn from each other while still saying staying true to themselves and what they believe but also some of the characters had drastic changes in like how they saw the world and it i don't want to say it's like six of crows but matthias and six of crows there's a character in there that reminds me that he reminds me of it kind of has that you know I'm a military guy like I'm a hundred percent for my country and then you kind of see that behind closed doors these people aren't really good people and you start slowly start getting reveals of how corrupt it is and I don't know it just was like really well done I really enjoyed it I love the dynamics between the characters I just feel like this is YA done well and this is also like a double-sided love triangle done well like I wanted the characters to end up with both of the people and it kind of is obvious who they're gonna end up with but you really feel bad on both sides and I just feel like the love triangle was done well the little love story was done well the background and learning about just other characters from their past was done well the structure of the book was done well the timeline like everything it just ate it was heavy in like like mother relationships so like you got to see i don't know how to explain it because i don't want to spoil it but like in these books it just was heavy in like the relationships with mothers and one of the main characters it has a lot of backflashes of her mother and her grandmother and just like how they kind of were driven apart and I kept thinking that it was reminding me of a movie that I used to watch with my grandmother and when I listened to the author's note she said that this book was based or she loosely based off based it off of that movie that I was talking about what is it called let me look it up yeah and it's called imitation of life and in this movie the main character she is white passing like she literally just looked like a white woman but her mother is black and her mother is the help and she completely disrespects her mother she kind of cuts her off just completely cuts her mother out of her life just so she can present as a white woman and you just see the way that she mis mistreats her mother but then you also get to know the character and understand where she's coming from and that story is just so heartbreaking like i still think about 
the scene where she's just like laying over her mother's casket like way in the end and just like sobbing and being so regretful and you feel that same pull see you feel i felt that same pull of reading the book and the beast of prey because we really got to see the perspective of the main character's mother and her grandmother because her mother has splendor and she has and she's very powerful she has the ability to I think she has like she has like a magical ability that could like cont controls people in a way but because Daraja are seen as lesser than or dangerous or they're kind of like shoved off she they had a really rough life and her her daughter ends up being ven or slowly being vengeful towards her and you kind of see where her her daughter her daughter's views of her kind of change but she really just wants to live like a normal life and have like normal friends and not have to worry about being chased down because she doesn't have the splendor and no one knows that she is she could just like pass like no one knows she's that her mother's Daraja unless she's with her mother because they have to wear like bracelets or something like that that identify them as Daraja so she kind of like shoves her mom off but we also got to see her as a child where she kind of saw her mom as like a hero so it's kind of heartbreaking to just see her views of her mother change because she wants to live a life that she feels like she can't when she's you know with her mom and then she falls in love and that's like a whole thing and reading this book after knowing what happens in the first book like knowing how that love story ends up because you already know the situation that the main character's mother is in currently because of the father. So it's like seeing her fall in love and already knowing the ending is rough. Like even that is rough. I just felt so bad. It just was like a really heart wrenching one. And then in the end, there was also like a lot of reveals that I really enjoyed. Just the plot and the pacing was really great. I loved it. And I have to get like the new copies because I read all three on audiobook. I listened to it on Libby and I just had a great time with it so I, I still have the arc <laughs> up there but I think it's it's well overdue time that I get like physical copies of these books because the new covers are beautiful and I loved it then I read my third <laughs> five star of this month which was fire of vengeance I've already talked about this book in my five star search video which I'll link up here if y'all want to check it out but it just the Evan Winter, the man you are today, I mean, the action was packed, the the plots were plotting, I had a great time, live, laugh, love, Tao, like, if you don't like Tao, if you read the first book and you don't like Tao and you wait for him to get some character development, baby, don't hold your breath, don't hold your breath because he ain't getting no character development, he actually gets worse, he, it gets worse, he just, no, he is so angry, he's so vengeful, he is so full of just anger regret and phys just everything he's just full of just a balled up animosity he's just mad so he's like the ver he's like a human <laughs> version of anger in the second book and he makes some crazy ass decisions that end up costing a lot of people and the book was just insane like there was a scene where a main character's eyes got burnt was burned out or something like that like their eyes got burned out so that the last thing that they saw was the scene that happened like imagine blinding someone and the last thing they see is this horrific like it was so horrific I don't even want to spoil it but blinding someone is insane to me like this is the last thing you're ever gonna see again that is insane like to me that is insane but it's basically following the main character his name is Tao and in the first book something happens to him that makes him have a very much tunnel vision on what he wants to do with his life and in this world it's very political it's very it's a huge hierarchy between lessers and nobles and whatever and there's also like an alternative world where there's like demons and you can go to that world and if you die in that world you don't really die but you feel everything you would feel if you did die like the way that you die there like if someone cuts your throat there you're gonna feel your throat get cut you might come you come back to life in the other world but it's gonna hurt you know what i'm saying you really gonna feel that and in the first book he lost his damn mind like i don't want to i don't want to spoil it in case you haven't read the book but i think you should and if you like hard-headed main characters that are full of anger 
then I highly recommend it. Like the second book, eight, we're still waiting on that third book. We have no word of when the hell that's coming out, but we'll see. But that was my third five star of the month. So the next book that I read was Grace of Kings. And I actually listened to this on audiobook, baby. This is, yeah, this is a, this was the big one. How long is this? 617 pages. I prefer these editions because they're super cute and they have pink flowers on them. So the new covers are super dark. I don't really, I don't really like them. So I actually prefer these covers because they have like cherry blossoms on them and they're very light and colorful and I love it. So yeah, but this is the book that was kind of set up similar to the spear cuts through water where I said like the story telling of it was very similar where it was so complex and it felt political and it had this doesn't have mythology in it but the gods are in it and they play a role in the story and you hear their point of view i will say there is mythology in it because you do get a little bit of a backstory for the gods and they do play a part in the story so it does have a little bit of mythology in it but it focuses on main characters who are after power and are after like being emperors they both have different reasons for being driven to want to change the world in this book it follows this emperor who decides that he wants to make to make a change in the world he feels like it's too divided there's like he it's too many cultures he looking around he like i don't like this there's too many cultures it's too many people doing their own thing how about i kill everybody so yeah it was a little bit of genocide he killed everybody and he said we're gonna start over we're gonna keep one group of people and we all gonna have the same way of life okay so he went into it with good intentions to me that's insane like i don't even know how you can think that's a good idea but i can understand the thought process behind it because you get to see his thought process behind it so you get to see he was trying to do a good thing but that is insane genocide is never okay so you wiping out group, large groups of people because you want everyone to stop fighting you want everyone to have a similar way of life is insane so of course some of the the people that he slaughtered they may live on one or two of them from that group of people may live on and they pissed off they like this man is still up in power i'm pissed he killed my whole family so one of the main characters he is this huge dude like he's huge he's one of two people that are left from this group from this from this culture and his uncle raises him and tells him like the emperor did this to your family so you're gonna have to power up and you have to take that man down so his whole life is structured around taking down the emperor and you just see him slowly, slowly, slowly just be angry. Like he was pissed off and he gets betrayed in many ways in this books. There's a lot of miscommunication between two characters that met each other and it just, it just eats. So it's another main character who is this jokester. He's very goofy, he's very broke he don't have no like he doesn't have any structure to his life he doesn't have any goals any ambitions nothing he just live laugh love drunk every day but he has a way with people and he has a genuinely good heart and he gets to the point in his life where he's like what is my purpose like what am i trying to do i want to be for the people i want to make a change in this world so he also is after the emperor now he's kind of He's not really after the emperor, but he kind of climbs the political ladder in a way and he sneaks and connives his way into power. And just like the whole setup and the whole story behind him is very interesting. There's magic kind of in this book as well. It's just it's just fun. Like I love the little here and there of the gods, like here and there little point of views, hearing them argue with each other. It's just fun just seeing the background of the gods, seeing that, seeing these two characters become friends and how they both want something similar, but they're going about it different ways. Like we have the one main character who is very sweet, very charming, and very much for the people, and he wants to make changes in a good way, but he does it with his heart and he's very gentle and he takes advice from his friends he builds he has you know a found family around him and a group of people that he trusts and then the other main character who is also trying to make a change but he's just full of anger and you kind of just go from there the story eats i started the second book actually it's it's amazing so 
this one really this is like four and a half stars really this one eight i had a great time with it i as i was reading i screenshot the chapters that i'm reading and i put like notes for what i want to annotate so i do need to go through this and annotate it but it was really a good time i'm happy that i read this and it's another book on my shelf that is done so this one this might be a new fave i really really enjoyed just the whole setup of it it just was so <sighs> loved it very political very in-depth very much like follows generations of power and stuff like that so if that's kind of your thing I highly recommend okay, it. The last book that I read was In the Shadow of the Fall. And this is actually an ARC. I got it approved on NetGalley. It's from a video that I ended up scrapping. <laughs> so you guys will never see that video. Will never see the light of day. I read that in April. And I enjoyed it. I'm, it seemed like a fantasy novella. So it's a little bit on the shorter side. It's like YA. It's basically following this main character who grows up being a priest. And the whole idea behind the just the setting that she's in is when you become of age one of the orisha gods speak to you and you kind of have a connection and you get their magical ability like they give you some of their juice you know what i'm saying but she never got that like she's like six years behind she never got any of the juice like none of the orisha have ever talked to her and she ends up going on a journey where she's just like who am i what's going on you know what i'm saying she kind of feels lost because it's like her whole life is structured around finding an orisha god to speak to her and get their magical ability and when that doesn't happen for years on end she's kind of desperate and she makes some rash decisions and ends up in some crazy situations but there's slowly more and more reveals and i love a religious book channel i love a religious book i love a book with gods in it i love when just the breakdown of religion is in books like comfort me with apples it's killing moon like anything that has like a religious background where it's kind of like on the verge of cultish but not really it's just like this is just their belief their live laugh loving following what they believe in but it's a little cultish it's a little bit cultish but yeah there's a lot of reveals in it that she learns along the way and i just enjoyed it because i just love seeing books with like african mythology chinese mythology a different mythology besides greek mythology so i like seeing that being brought to the forefront it was an interesting book it definitely is reads ya <laughs> it definitely reads ya but i enjoyed it i will say it's like a 3.5 i like the cover i might get a physical copy i'm not 100 sure the cover eats so we'll see. I'm not sure I'm not sure if there's gonna be any changes because this is the arc. So I can't really say if there's gonna be anything different in the final copy, but I did enjoy it. Those are all the books that I read in April. Now I wanna touch on some of the books that I'm not gonna talk about them because I didn't either didn't finish them or I just I just wanna mention them. So another book that I started and read a good majority of it was the second book in the Grace of King series, which is The Wall of Storms. And that book is like 28 hours. Um, we'll finish it when we finish it, okay? We'll finish it when we finish it. But this one is basically following the new emperor and his children. So I love a generational series. I love seeing characters go from like children to adults, to their children, to their children become adults. I love seeing that. I just like seeing what make characters tick seeing those small betrayals seeing those small changes seeing the, the favoritism affect people or it just just seeing their point of views and seeing how they become who they are i love stories like that so right now we're kind of following we're still following the emperor but we're also following his kids and it's very interesting i can already see the favoritism i can already see the favoritism i can see what's going down there but i'm interested to see what type of characters the children will become but i'm still reading it just wanted to mention it just wanted to bring it up and then i'm also buddy reading the shadow of the gods with my boyfriend and we're both really he's actually flying through it he's, he reads faster than me he reads like a, he reads like a page faster than me like i read really slow and i kind of like have the scene in my head i'm a slow reader <laughs> yeah shout out to my slow readers but he reads really fast and he's enjoying it so i'm happy that i picked a book that we could buddy read that we're both enjoying we're over halfway through and this is my first john gwen book and i'm having a great time 
I'm really having a great time with it. I really love Orca. I really love all of the point of views that we're following. And I love the creatures in this book. And I just love the setup. I love the fighting scenes. They're so gory. They're so bloody and just just nasty like i just love the get down okay and this also has gods in it but the gods are like dragons and wolves and bears and stuff like that and it's norse mythology so really enjoying that buddy read with my boyfriend and then i'm also reading fate inked and blood and that is for another video can't talk too much on that but that is another north mythology and it's a fantasy romance so y'all will see my thoughts on that in an upcoming video when the, when the video finished okay yeah when the video finished but those are all the books that i read how i feel about all of them and books that i'm currently reading so i hope you guys enjoyed this video let me know if you've read any of these books if you have any recommendations for books similar to the grace of kings i would greatly appreciate it put them in the comment section below you know what i'm saying so anything that's like political has gods in it and it follows like generations of family if you have anything like that please leave that in the comment section below especially if it has like mythology that isn't greek mythology you know what i'm saying if the camera's going in and out of focus i apologize i don't know what crack she be on she be doing her own thing I, what, what can i say but i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you made it to the end please leave this emoji right here in the comment section below so i know you made it to the end and i will see you next week all right always remember read a book keep your life interesting i will see you next time okay bye Psst. it's almost my birthday three days away two days away by the time y'all see this video so Almost my birthday. Yay!